Um, what I'm going to do throughout the semester is I'm going to post short videos of the various experiments we're doing in the laboratory. And the idea is to show you the high points, the important things you need to do, and I'll, I'll demonstrate them to you so that you have a better experience in the lab and you kind of maybe get to the point where you can understand, visu see visually what's happening and see what the written protocol is. The scientific protocols frequently are a little bit difficult for people to start reading in initially, but once you are used to using them, they work out very, very well. So we're gonna have, I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna generate a little video. This video is gonna, we're gonna talk about sort of doing serial dilutions. And these serial dilutions are something we do in the lab. We generate standard curves, frequently during the semester, and you'll probably do the serial dilution probably at least every other, I mean, at least 50% of the experiments you'll be doing at least once, and then a number of the times you'll be doing at least two different kinds of serial dilutions as well. So it's an important technique, and it's a good way in doing this visually, it verifies your technique on using pipettes, but we'll be using auto pipettes. So the first experiment we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to show you how to do dilutions on using a, on a microplate. So what the protocol has is you take three tenths of a milliliter of blue dex one percent blue dextran. So we take set the pipette at 0.3 and add that to a one. B1, and C1. So now I have in the plate, you see there's 300 microliters of blue dec 1 percent blue dextran in A1, B1, and C1. The next step I want you to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to add 150 microliters of water in each of these because that will make it for being in twofold serial dilution. So I'll get the water here and I'll put 150 microliters in A2, A3, A4, and A5. And we'll do that for B as well. B2, B3, B4 and B5. So what I found doing serial dilutions is I, I ritually always, even though it doesn't matter which order I add these in, right now as far as preparing for the dilution, I always go ahead and start from higher dilution to lower dilution and always do that. So now I have the plate where it's 200 microliters of 1% blue dextran in the column one, A, B, and C. Now column two through five have 150 microliters of water. What we'll do is we'll take 150 microliters out of A1 and we'll add that to B2. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll mix by pipetting up and down. And what I'm kind of doing while I'm doing this, since it's a colored solution, I'm actually looking to make sure it looks like it's mixed in the, in the well. So I'll take 100, after I've mixed it a well, I'll take 150 microliters out of, out of A2 and add it to A3. And I'll pipette up and down. And what I'm doing is I have the tip almost to the very, very bottom of the well so that I won't be sucking up any air. Because the, if, you, if you push air into this, you're gonna create bubbles and that'll create problems for the plate reader, you'll get aberrant data. So now I've got that solution in A3 mixed up, now I'll add it to A4. Pipe it up and down. I, I think you should do it at least three, four times. I do it between four to six times, depending on how I feel and then how much of a dilution it is. We're only making two-fold dilutions, so I don't think you, you don't have to I don't mix as much. If I was doing a tenfold dilution, I'd be mixing a lot more. So I'm going from A4 to A5 and mix that up. Now 
now, if you remember Beer's law from prior chemistry classes, you realize that the path length needs to be the same. It needs to be a fixed distance. And here, this last sample on the plate here is twice as high as the one in the previous lane. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 150 microliters out of that well and then place it in the well next to it. We probably will not be getting absorbance readings on this well. So now we've done that, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do the same series of, ex of steps to be, and I'll, I'll, I'll describe it less and just kind of mechanically go through because you can do this relatively quickly. And the more of these you've done, the quicker and faster that you'll be able to do these things. The first time you're doing it, take your time, be careful, make sure you're doing everything correctly. I have no idea how many times I've done this over the years. But I'm making a point of pipetting up and down to mix. I kind of refer to this as pipette mixing. You'll hear me say, go ahead and mix the samples using your pipette. This is what I mean by pipetting up and down. Now I'm doing the last sample. And I'll take 150 microliters out and put it in that other well. Now we'll go through here, remove the tip, and do this to the C row. Just add it, mix it with the pipette. And notice that as I'm doing this, I'm not changing pipette tips between wells because what I'm doing by mixing is I'm actually adding the sample the next sample into the pipette and there's no contamination. So we have, it's, it's the same, it'll be the same, all the residual liquid will all be exactly the same concentration because I'm mixing it in the tip. So there's no need to change tips out for each one of these samples. In fact, if you change your tips, your probably your standard curve will probably not be quite as good. So I'm doing the last sample it would be the sort of the one sixteenth concentration. And put the last in the well. So now we have a solution that's 1%, percent 0.25%, 1.2, 0.125%, and 0.0625%. And we have, we have triplicates, and these are now ready to read, read in the plate reader. But part of the other part of the experiment is for you to use your pipette is I want you to also get used to making dilutions using uh, tubes in the pipettes on the side. What I did prior to is I've went ahead and I've added a half a milliliter and each one of these tubes that I, have, that I have labeled one half, one fourth, one eighth, and one sixteenth. So I have these already set up. Okay, so I have a solution here of blue dextran. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, a half, I'm going to change my pipette to a half a milliliter. And I'll take a half a milliliter out of this tube. And I'm going to add it to the half. 0.5% tube. So I'll go ahead and I'll mix this up. Sort of the same way. I put the tip on the very bottom of the well. Now I'll take a half a milliliter out of this sample, and I will add it to the next tube. And what I'm doing is I'm doing pipette mixing again. I'm taking, my tip is at the very bottom of the tube. So I have a half a milliliter here and from the one fourth, and now I'm going to go to the one eighth.
have the half a mil at the end. Now I'll go into the 1 16th. And notice that I'm just pipetting up and down just to mix. And you see the solution is a lighter blue. All right. So we now have made a series of dilutions and tubes. And you notice that each one of these is a lighter color. And notice the tube at the end, which at the end is, has a larger volume. So the next thing to do is to place them on the plate. So I'll do is set the pipette for 150 microliters. So we'll take the blue dex the one percent solution here, and add that to E1. And I'll add the 150 microliters to G1. Okay, I'll put that tube off to the side. Now I will take the pipette out and I'll take the 1.5 fold diluted and add that to E2, F2. and G2. Then I will go through and now the 1 fourth diluted and add that to E3, F3, and G3. Now the 1 eighth goes into E4, F4, and G4. And notice in this case, since each of these samples are independent of each other, I'm actually changing pipette tips in between each sample. And now it's time to do the 1 16th concentration, the 0.06. 0.06 concentration and add that to G to E5, F5, and G5. So you've now accomplished and you've done serial dilutions of samples to by two different mechanisms. And so the lab protocol will be you'll bring these to, to me or the TA and we'll put them on the plate reader and we'll read the absorbances and give you a and uh, and we'll upload the data sheet to Blackboard and I have posted a video I'll be posting a video on how to plot the data and how to present that data so if you have any questions feel free to, to ask and send me emails or ask during class we'll see you later thanks